Okay, so I'd really like to just kick off by introducing the Comms Avenue, because I'm not going to assume that everybody knows about the Comms Avenue here. And we are a capacity building and networking platform for communications professionals across Africa. So if you see the screen, the screen gives you a snapshot of, of the community really where over 700 and we have members from 17 African, 15 African countries, I beg your pardon. And since we launched in April, 2020, we've engaged over 70 senior professionals in the industry. And these engagements range from webinars, our comms mentoring program, which we're currently doing a call for mentors. So if you're a senior professional here with over eight years experience and you would love to mentor a younger professional, please get on our mentoring program. It's always so rewarding and so impactful. We're starting the fourth batch in March. And then we also engage through in-person events and, and networking events as well. So it's it's really a robust community. And the aim why we're doing this webinar series, it's so that our members across the different regions can begin to join the professional bodies. We know that there are many professional bodies. I'm based in Nigeria. So you have the Nigerian Institute of PR. Then if you're in Africa, there's the Africa Public Relations Association, which we had a conversation with them last week that was quite interesting. And we, we spoke with the rep from Tanzania, there's South Africa, there's, there's all over you know, the continent. And it's important for us to join professional bodies. It's important for us to be part of a group, you know, part of a community that allows us to do our, our work as communicators and PR professionals to the highest level and standard. So we're just having these engagement conversations so that members become aware of what's available in their region. So if you're in Zimbabwe, if you're in Zambia, if you're in Ghana, why should you get involved? And you know, I'm so glad that we have some representatives here. So I still, oh, hi Faith, I see Faith. Okay, so I'm just going to spotlight Judith and Faith as well, because we're gonna be having, we're meant to have one more person, but we're just going to, we're just going to kick off. So Faith and Judith, can you hear me clearly? Um, yes, I did Oyen, I can hear you. Okay, awesome, awesome. I can hear you. Great, but it's fine if you can see your face. Um, let me see. Okay, so I mean, I'm just going to start off by asking you to introduce yourselves. Let's let's get to know you. So I'm just going to start with Judith. Let's get to know you, um, and then we'll take it from there. Good morning. Thank you. So you already said my name. My name is Judith Campbell. I am. Um, manager public relations for a bank known as NATSEV here in Zambia. I'm a member of uh, uh, ZAPRA, which is the Zambia Public Relations Association, and I am vice secretary for the association. Uh, um, is that enough? <laughs> yes, that's it, should, it should suffice. <laughs> yes, it suffices that. Thank you so much, Judy. And over to you, Faith. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Faith Sen. I'm, I'm the, I double as the, the fashion PR specialist. I handle PR for fashion, beauty, lifestyle brands. And I'm also the founder of Women in Public Relations, um, a not for profit organization I started in 2017 to bring women or female practitioners and students alike um, together. And so I guess those are the two, two aspects of me. So first as a fashion PR specialist and then founder of Women in PR Ghana. Um, I guess that's it for now. Thank you, Faith. And I really absolutely love the work that you do. And Faith has an incredible fashion sense. Like every time I go on her Instagram page, I'm like, how does she do it? She dresses so nice. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you much for joining. Okay, so I'm just going to get right into the questions and I'll start off with Judith. Judith. You mentioned that you're the Vice Secretary of the Association in Zambia, which is totally amazing. But I'd like to know, how did you start the journey with the association? How did you become a member? What made you decide to take that decision to join the association?
Hi, Judith. Can you hear us? Mm, let me see. Okay, she's still on. Okay, I'm not sure Judith can hear us. So maybe maybe I'll start with you, Faith, because I think Judith has jumped off. Oh yeah, she's jumped off. Okay, while she comes back. So Faith, let me start with you um, with the IPR Ghana. So what? why did you make that decision to be part of, of the Institute? Okay, so I was going through my, my cards and I remembered that I'd finished my university in 2011 uh, my degree education in 2011. And for a period, I realized that um, if I really wanted to practice PR, then I needed to be part of a professional body. Um, first of all, because I knew that was a way to get to connect with industry people. And starting all by yourself or being an, a, a recent graduate, you are definitely going to find, uh, face some challenges. Maybe now it would be slightly different because of the many resources we have available online. But um, eight years or nine years ago, that wasn't the case. So it was really, really important that I, so I made that decision to, to look for the IPR Ghana office and went there to register to be a member of um, IPR because I knew that that was the way to get to, to sort of have some le legitimacy in my practice um, as a PR person. So um, eight years, nine years down the line, that was one of the reasons why I, I took that decision to, uh, to sign up for IPR Ghana. And also networking opportunities, uh, meeting people in the industry, um, learning from each other, having conversations that would benefit my practice. And so it was, it was, those were the few reasons why I decided to, to join, yeah. And I like that you, you spoke about legitimacy and you're right, like the environment is different now. You have a lot of resources, but I think that sometimes that can be a problem in and of itself because which one is the best practice? Which should you go with? So that community just guides you the access and you can, you can ask questions. And, and so thinking about your journey since you joined, can you share with us some of the benefits that you've, you've really gained from being part of the Institute? Um, like I mentioned earlier, I think access to uh, knowing professionals, um, knowing professionals, um, being able to know that, okay, this person practices, uh, that person practices, and then following them, following their journey to, to take inspirations from, but um, I have a little, maybe a little issue <laughs> with that because at some point, uh, maybe I, I attended a few of the some, uh, events back then, but some way, somehow I felt a bit lost because I was, uh, I was younger. And at the time, IPR seemed to be more of, a, IPR Ghana seems to be more of a bit of the older folks. There were very few younger people. And for some of us who had a niche I remember a few times I had gone there and introduced myself and I said I was into fashion PR. They were like, what are you talking about? Is that something like fashion PR? So I was a bit lost at the initial stages. Thankfully now, it's, it, things have changed so much. We have a lot of young people in IPR. They were before, but I think the older people were much active at the time. And so a few times I was lost, a few times um, I didn't know what, I thought I was in the wrong place and I wasn't getting the right resources, uh, the right, I mean, we talk about local case studies and all those things weren't available to, to at hand. So, <clears throat> and even in terms of reaching professionals, it wasn't that easy as well because you weren't going to, if you met them and you were introduced to yourself, you're still like a newbie and no one paid attention to you. And maybe that was one of the reasons why I, after a couple of years, I decided to start the Women in PR community because that, with that, it was, it was a community of colleagues. It was a community of people who were senior, but then you build that, that community where you can reach them, you can ask for their thoughts, you can ask for their, uh, their lessons and their journey and all those things. So it, it became more of the place where 
it was more we had more access to these people as compared to when I joined at the initial stages. But I think on the whole, it was still that body that you you can't you shouldn't ignore because it was is a, is a national peer is a body that regulates our practice here in Ghana, and so you also want to make sure that your practice is being is is not controlled but it's being overseen. If there's a word like that, yes, by by somebody that knows what the practice is, and as and when sometimes you need help, you know you can always follow them for for best the best practices and lessons and case studies and other things. So, really, really important for whatever the reason might, must be, you should be part of a professional body. Thank you. That, that was a really, really robust answer. And you touched on different aspects. So even beyond the networking, because sometimes you know, when people talk about networking, you also have to think about yourself as an individual. I was so awkward with networking at the beginning of my career because I was like, what am I going to say to this person? But then the resources, I also think it's, it's, it's very important. Like you mentioned case studies, just knowing, you know, honing your skill, and which is so important, especially in the days that, that we live in now. So thank you so much for sharing that. I think Judith is back on. Judith, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Welcome back. Okay, so the question really was, you know, you're the vice secretary of the association there in Zambia, and we just wanted to know your journey. How did you start? Like, what's, what's inspired you to join the association? What benefits have you gained? And, you know, why did you just decide to, to join the association really? Um, my story is interesting. I didn't really decide to join the association. I was, I like to joke and say I was literally dragged into the association. So I had colleagues who shared with me what the association was about. Um, I saw how they were thriving and doing well. So they told me, they said, look, you can join us. So I started out and joined, um, like in ZAPRA, we have subcommittees. So there's a committee that is known as the accreditation committee. Uh, so where it's a team of people that will do research, they'll do maybe content for trainings, they will assess membership applications. So I joined that team. And from there, I think I started networking with the group. And that's how I found myself joining the association. I, I built a good number of networks. I, I eventually found myself um, being part of the council. Um, and already, I think I had a passion for communications and PR, but I think my joining made my knowledge about PR grow and uh, it helped me to feel safe in the profession because I could now interact with colleagues who understand the space within which I'm working. and. Um, also felt like, like I have a backup plan. I can never get stuck um, in my job because there's always someone that I can learn from. There's always someone that I can maybe even just talk to if I need to uh, during the course of my, uh, my duty. Well, that sounds really exciting. And I, I liked the way you said that you were dragged into it. Um, so how did you then morph to being the vice secretary? So you got in, you saw that it was great, and then now you're the vice secretary. Can you talk us through that? Sorry, kindly uh, repeat your question. So I mean, now you're the vice secretary. So how did that happen? How did you transition from being a member to becoming the vice secretary of the association? Oh, okay, great. Um, how I transitioned, I think I was also just, my career path, sometimes I like to think, I think people around me, so they encouraged me, they said, why don't you join the council? Uh, why don't you become formally involved and be part of it? And I also, I think, because I, I saw the benefits in being in Zapra, I felt I could contribute um, to the association, contribute to the profession. So that's how I decided to, to stand for the position of vice secretary. By the way, we have the 13 member council that runs Zapra. So it's a, it's a council that is elected. And then we have the matron and our matron is usually the matrons or patron's office, it's usually the Ministry of Information. 
uh, from the Zambian government who sits, uh, supports the council as patron or matron. Yeah, so that's how I stood and uh, I was elected as uh, vice secretary. And so far it's been good. Amazing. Okay, so, and still on you, Judith, right now we're trying to get younger people to join professional bodies in their countries and in their regions. In your experience, would you say that there is a reluctance from younger people to join associations? Are there barriers that stop them from being part of ZAPRA, for example, that you're maybe working on to make better? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there are barriers per se. Um, probably the main challenge, like maybe for us, ZAPRA, we are still an association and we are not yet operating under the law. We are not yet a legal entity, which we are hoping to be able to get the legal uh, um, authority. Sometime this year, we've done a lot of background work as an institution already. Um, so we are hoping maybe even the first quarter or second quarter of this year. So that gives us the mandate to, to be able to to get people to join because it will be a requirement for them to work. But so maybe the challenges that we get maybe to have is because people know that it's a voluntary association. So they can choose to join or not to join. So my take is the more they hear stories, the more they see what the association does, then they get interested. So we do have people, I think quite a number of people in Zambia who are now interested and who've joined the association. But uh, when we get the legal mandate, will have more of the authority uh, to have people feel obliged uh, to be part of the association. Thank you so much. I'm just going to quickly go back to Faith, but I just want to confirm that our rep from Zimbabwe is, if, if our rep from Zimbabwe is here, if yes, please indicate so that I can bring you up as well. Um, while, while we wait for that. So I'm going to come to you, Faith. Um, I want to talk about how was the process joining for you? Did you fight, was it easy? Um, to join the association because there are different regulations for different associations and institutes. So what was that process of joining like for you? Um, at the time, I think the, the main hindrance was it was financial. <laughs> it was financial uh, constraint. Um, I was a recent graduate, not much money, but I, I, I think it was part of my, my new year, my year plan, my year goal. So I am sure I did even register in December, almost end of the year, because I didn't want the year to pass me by without um, joining. So that's exactly what I did. Um, but I, I saved some money at the time to be able to do that. Um, and I think those were, it wasn't that difficult. It was just walk through to the um, secretariat and then given your details and then uh, pick up a form and all that. I don't know if that has changed now because mine has been quite a, a number of years now. And um, I don't know who, what the procedures are, but before then, I think a degree education or a diploma education um, certificate should, should get you in as a first entry. The only thing with that was also that I think one of the things that is really, really doing well now is the fact that once you join the membership, you become an affiliate member. And then over the period, you need to take a certification course to become an associate member. And then the next step will be the accredited member. And then with the accredited member, you become the, uh, you have the APR to your name. And I think over the period, it wasn't really as effective, but the last few years I've seen like the number grow from the last, um, my last AGM when I attended in 2018, up until um, this very recent ones, I've seen the number grow. I haven't, I have still been an affiliate level over since, since I joined. And it's definitely my plans in the couple, in the next couple of years to move to the next level and then the second level to get my APR, my accreditation. So it's definitely in my plan. It's not been that difficult. I think once you make that commitment to uh, towards that, and definitely some fin financial constraints, yes, you need to make some budget for it, it's not free. But once you're able to solve those issues, you should be able to get into it. It's not, it's not that difficult at all. It's not, it's not. 
Thank you for that. And we, we spent quite a bit of time last, last Saturday talking about the financial aspect, especially if you want to join more than one professional body and all the money adds up. So thank you for, for spotlighting that. Judith, what's the process of, of joining Zapra? Uh, I don't see you. Judy, can you hear us? I still see you here. Okay, I think maybe her internet. Okay, while we wait for Judy to come back, um, welcome again to everyone joining us. This is our engagement with Professional Bodies Part 2. And we're talking to reps from Ghana and um, Zambia as well. We're also supposed to speak to a rep from Zimbabwe. I hope that we would... We'll get to do that before the end of this, this conversation. While we wait for Judith, okay, I think. Uh, okay, so Faith, I'm going to call back to you because my very next question to you was about the, the National Communications Summit that just recently held. I mean, I followed it. I was like a stalker. <laughs> I followed it on social media. First of all, there's a boat cruise. I'm like, these people are really enjoying the boat cruise. But even beyond that, I, I liked that there was just a diversity of conversations that I felt were relevant, not just for the PR professionals in, in Ghana, but there were so many nuggets that I got out of it. So as somebody that went, you know, I just wanted you to talk through your experience and some of the insights you gained from that summit. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so it was it was exciting. Like, like I said, I was I attended 2018, 2019, 2020. I couldn't go, but this year I, I, I had to go. Um and then but it was it was great. It was a mix of not just learning, but an opportunity to to network. Unfortunately for me, I couldn't really network so much because I was tasked to handle the social media page for the institute. So I was about 70-80% of the time behind the laptop, um, editing copies um, to, be, to be shared, editing, selecting photos, watermarking them, and all that. So it was a bit of trying to do that. So I was actually like working whilst I was at the summit, so, but I squeezed some time to, to do a few of that. But it was really exciting. Like you said, the conversations varied. Um, I mean, the theme for the, uh, the summit, uh, the conference was um, truth well told and shared. And the president captured it in three, in three, in three, di in three um, words. So I noted it that it was on, so PR, PR professionals are in the business of um, reputation, they are in the business of relationship, and then they are in the business of relevance. And if we follow through these, you realize that's what was um, used to, um, to select the theme, which was the truth well told and shared. If we, as PR professionals, if we, if we lead in the truth and we share them in its rightful place, it would find our relevance as professionals. And that's one thing that it, it, it really, it really hits me hard. And going forward, we need to, instead of just being out there trying to put any kind of information, let's seek more to put in our truth. And as professionals, Yes, sometimes because of organizations, structures, and so many things, we may be pushed into a corner, but we need to stand for, for truth as professionals. And I think that's where we will gain our relevance uh, in our organizations because um, we have organizations that do not understand PR, CEOs that do not understand PR. And these were also highlighted in the conversations in terms of leadership for professionals. If you have CEOs and executive directors who do not understand our profession, then it makes our work very hard. And I think some of the suggestions that came out was IPR leading uh, some form of engagement with CEOs or trainings with CEOs to better understand what uh, our role are, what our roles are, and what we bring to the table. And that way it forms that synergy in our work it makes our work a little more easier and relevant. And so those are the th key things that I picked, I picked up in that in our, in our conference. And we talked about leadership as well in, in different forms. So, yeah. Thank you so much. And I like what you said about the Institute leading engagement sessions with CEOs. Interestingly, one of the advertising agencies in Nigeria, they're doing some sort of training for CEOs when they, where they're going to be talking about the business approach to marketing communications. And I think that's important because 
we can always play our part, but then there also needs to be that understanding yeah. from organizations about the value that you're bringing to the table. And understanding that when we say do it this way, we have a reason for saying that. You should. But we know what it is, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so while we wait for, let me see if Judith is back here. She isn't back on yet. I want to ask questions, and I want I want us to flip this a bit because, you know, since last week, I've received different messages from our members just saying, you know, we talked about the certification fees, for example, joining fees, some of the challenges that they faced with with the PR bodies, um, just in the different countries internationally. So I wanted to ask if people have any questions or for that challenge that you want to share, or even just your experience. If you're a member of a professional body in your in your country, you can just let us know um, what what's your experience been like. What are some of the benefits you've gained, or if you're still trying to make that decision and you're not sure, you know, it would be nice. You can type in the chat. You can raise your hand, and then I will call you. But I'm just going to check if I have questions to ask Faith. Uh, let's see. I also see that we have we have. People from Hi Siwa, Stefano. Okay, yes, yes, please. Um, I'm going to welcome. Uh, this, is this Chanda or Chanda? It's Chanda. Hi, Chanda. Hello, Siwa. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for stepping in. So, if you just um, briefly introduce yourself, and then I can get on with the conversation with you. Um, thank you so much. Um, my name is Chanda Mwanga. I'm a member of the Zambia Public Relations Association, but I'm also um, a former publicity secretary in the National Governing Council for the uh, for Zapra. So I was I was just chatting with Judy, and um, it seems she's having difficulties um, with with the internet. So she said, perhaps I could step in and just briefly talk about uh, or address the question that you had raised earlier. Okay, um, okay. To do with uh, the process of joining, joining uh, the Zambia Public Relations Association. Um, but before I quickly, I, I hope I'm gonna be as, as, as quick as I can, so I can allow for others to, to chip in because you requested for some uh, questions or something like that. Um, first of all, um, the Zambia Public Relations Association is, uh, is Zambia's uh, peer professional body and uh, basically brings together our communications experts uh, in the fields of um, communications itself, public relations. We also incorporate colleagues from the media, those uh, trained journalists. And um, our objectives are basically to promote general understanding of the public relations and communication specialties, and of course, appreciate the value of the practice. And that helps us to, uh, to establish and maintain professional status. I can't hear Chanda anymore. Oh, no, that's six. Uh, so those are some of the uh, the, the objectives that uh, that um, the the Zapra exists uh, for. But let me also make mention that um, over the the last uh, ten to eleven years that have been in existence, we have uh, be, been able to draw a membership of one hundred and thirty four. Uh, as you may be aware, we're not yet um, uh, established by an act of parliament, which is an agenda that we are pushing. So at the moment, we are basically an association that whose membership is um, on voluntary basis, but we try and uh, encourage as many people to join the profession or the, the professional association as possible. When we, 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 we become an act of parliament, obviously it's going to be mandatory for every practitioner to be a member of this uh, this particular uh, association. Now, coming to the, uh, uh, the issue of membership, we we have different categories of membership. We've we've uh, we categorized in in the following. We've got full or general members. We've got student members. We've got associate members, and we've got uh, 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 fellowship, uh, as well as honorary membership. Now uh, the large 
larger contingent or the, the larger constituency of uh, ZAPRA is uh, those in the full or general membership category. This is open to individuals who possess relevant qualifications in the field of public relations, but we also leave it open to those that are practicing communications and um, uh, are on the path of um, uh, validating their practice with uh, some relevant qualification. And also those colleagues that are in the media and uh, you know, uh, are interested in matters to do with public relations because you agree with me that uh, some people say there's a thin line between journalism and public relations. So we try and accommodate um, uh, colleagues from both professions or as long as you're in the, in the communications uh, uh, field, because uh, obviously at some point you may want to just go into mainstream PR and you, we, we, we invite people to, to, to join us and gain full understanding. So when you have um, 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 you know, uh, qualifications in that field or you're practicing, then you are free to join the association. We've got a membership fee that we, we have prescribed that uh, those that want to join can um, uh, you know, pay and subscribe to the association. But as people join, we encourage them to, um, to, to, to also join the, the Continental Board, which is the African Public Relations uh, uh, Association, so that they, they, can, they can widen their scope in terms of uh, uh, gaining understanding and knowledge of this particular field. The membership um, uh, for student uh, is basically open to all students that, uh, that, uh, in, 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 that are studying, whether you're in the first year, in the second year, in the fourth year of your university, um, it, it's open to, to students. And of course, the, the subscription amounts in terms Uh, I think Chanda's internet. Thank you, Fanda. You can hear me, so I know it's not for me. Okay, okay, okay. Awesome. Thank you. I think he'll he'll come back to to answer the questions. But I, I think that that's really interesting. And I, I liked when he talked about encouraging the members to join the Africa Public Relations Association. Um, we had the rep with us last Saturday and there's a conference taking place in Tanzania in May for you know, all the, for members and non-members actually. And I, I thought that that was really fascinating and it's happening in Tanzania. So if you, if you need more information about that, you can visit their website. Um, something that I'm hoping that I can go for just to meet more people across the continent. Hi, Judith. Hi, Adele. <laughs> I, sorry, I fell off, so I'm oh, back okay. now. Yes, yeah, so I, I could continue if you like, where Chandler yes, left. Yes, yes uh, he was talking about uh, student membership and he was talking about how we encourage our members to, uh, to be able to join APRA as well. Then another category that we have of membership, we have a, a fellowship membership. Uh, so this one, uh, we confer upon members who've been practicing public relations uh, for 10 years and above. Uh, so if they've been exceptional in their practice, so this membership is, is conferred uh, upon such individuals who are part of, uh, so this one you just can't apply. You have to be conferred. Uh, your track record, your professional track record has to speak for you. Then we also have a, a category of honorary membership. So this one where they are honorary. So this one's the difference between the fellowship membership and the honorary is that one. For the honorary, you are a practitioner in public relations. The fellowship one, you are a practitioner who's been practicing uh, for 10 years and above and you've been exceptional in your practice for the honorary membership it's conferred upon members um, within the association or outside in recognition of their outstanding service um, to zapra if they've been supporting the profession then they can be conferred with this uh, honorary uh, membership 
Uh, I don't know if uh, Chanda mentioned, if you, you may allow me, um, I can briefly just talk about the reasons that we forward why people should join Zapra. Sure, please. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So this one, the first reason, I think as human beings generally, we we get fulfillment by giving. So we, we like to say you join Zapra and contribute to the profession. So much as uh, I heard you talk about mentorship earlier. So much as you want to learn, you also want to share the knowledge that you have. So you join so that you, you can share what you have learned. There's nothing like I'm too senior. I cannot be a member of Zapra. So you join to contribute to the profession. You also join so that you can learn. So no matter how much you already know about uh, public relations, you can never know it all. I think that's a general rule in life as well. So you join so that you can learn from colleagues, your network. We have a number of different events that we usually have. So we, we have conferences uh, where we have different speakers addressing different topics. So you learn. We usually have professional talks, uh, which we usually try and hold maybe every quarter. So we have different activities. We have activities for students where we have a student symposium where we bring different uh, people from the public relations profession to speak to students and just inspire them that look, you're on the right track. And then we give students an opportunity to ask questions as well. So you learn and also, for ethics, you get to know the ethics. Uh, I think the more you practice, the more you associate with an association or an institute, you are always reminded of the ethics that you need to follow as a practitioner. So these are the reasons and networking, which I think we have been talking about already. So you get to meet people. When I was giving my introduction, I talked about how you can never be stuck in public relations. There will always be somebody that you can approach and ask when you're stuck. And that's been my experience personally. Uh, if I'm given something at the office that I need to work on and I'm not so sure, I'll pick up the phone and ask my colleagues. And I will not, I will shine not because of my efforts. I'm able to shine in my practice because I belong to a family of professionals that can help me. Thank you so much. And I really love how you just ended it with the fact that it's not even just about what you can take. It's also about what you can give. And I think that that's so important, even just for us professionally. And it's what we do at the Combs Avenue communities, exchanging knowledge, sharing knowledge, giving opportunities for people that want to give back, to teach, to just, you know, bounce off ideas with your colleagues, which I think is so important. I think there's one more question I'll ask you, Judith, and what are some of the upcoming programs that you have that people may be interested in being part of? Thank you. Um, I, I, allow me to just mention, Adele, like I've turned on my camera because I'm thinking maybe it's easier for me to yes, with to manage yes, my network. That, yes. So, so I think most of you saw me already, just in case I needed to mention that. So we have a number of upcoming activities. Um, allow me to also mention, I think, something that we've been grappling with, not only as PR people, but in the world currently is COVID. Normally for Zapra, we would always hold uh, conferences, physical conferences, and we've also had to change the way we, we do our activities because of COVID. So you find that even the number of activities that we usually used to have, uh, like in the physical form, we are currently having some of them virtually, like this meeting that we have here. We could have met somewhere in Zimbabwe or in Ghana, but thank God, uh, as professionals in PR, I think we've been able now to learn that we need to invest more resources in using different forms of communication. So talking about activities that we have this year, we have a number of activities. Uh, so we plan to have a professional talk, which will, where we'll have a webinar uh, for this year. We have planned to have a a conference, we have an annual conference and AGM. Um, so the plans are underway. We'll announce the dates because of, like I mentioned, because of COVID, we're just waiting to get our clearance. We'll announce the dates and share with you. Would love all of you to come um, and attend our conferences. We have very beautiful conferences. So we will announce that. So we, are, we have uh, at the conference, so we have awards gala as well during the conference. So here's what we do as Zapra. We also award 
excellence in the professional practice. So when we have a conference, we'll have the first two days, we'll, we'll be learning. And then the last day, we have an award gala night. So we have members in the association make entries of the works that they've done in the previous year, works that they did, and then they are awarded for that. So we'll have an award gala night. We hope to have a student symposium where we will bring students together and just inspire them, like I said earlier, and engage students. And then we also hope to have um, public relations and communications training in the third quarter of the year. So we'll share and also have, uh, we're planning to also have a number of networking events uh, for this year. So we'll be able to share at a later time, the actual debts as soon as we are able to, I think we're waiting to just do our proper projections and get guidance from the Ministry of Health in terms of when it is safe for us to gather. And then, but we also have virtual events. Sounds good. Looking forward to receiving it. And yeah, definitely. Ha however, we can also support you. We'll definitely do it. We're, we're big on collaboration at the Comms Avenue. So that, that sounds fantastic to me. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. So we're coming to the end. I have a question here for, for Faith about the women in, in PR Ghana. And it's to know more about about it and how to join, how to participate in, in that. Okay, so um, for women in PR, I think two days ago, Thursday night, we, we, we announced a new, a new change, a new um, exciting journey we are taking, which is also to become a membership based. Uh, right. Yes, it, it was about time because we've been doing this for five years without we've been supporting people we've been helping people get jobs we've been running like i actually spent about 50 to 6 50 percent or 40 percent of my hours handling helping people out managing putting together or overseeing copies social media putting together events and contents and so many things activities and all that and all these things are financial um uh, how to dependent. So over the period, and sometimes people send messages, how do I become a member of Women in PR? I love what you're doing. How do I become a member of it? How do I support? And so we, we've decided that to, to, to move forward and to, to put things in better structures, it was about time to, to move it into a paid membership. A paid membership because sometimes we put together events and then people don't, I mean, you, you spend money and other things and people don't show up. And now you have to look for your own personal money to pay the bills because you've already committed to it. And now we realize that you know, if we put it in a membership and people are committed, because it got some time, we have a WhatsApp page that is over almost 100 people. And sometimes you can plan events and estimate that, okay, 100 people, we can have about 30, 40 people, at least one third. And it doesn't, you don't get that. And people are always like, I want to join the community. I want to be part of it. But then it's difficult to plan with the numbers. So we wanted to get to a point where we scale down for quality. So now we have people who are paid members and they are committed to it because sometimes we share job opportunities. People go, they get a job. They don't even come back to acknowledge us. They don't come back to show appreciation. And so, and we don't know who gets the job. And sometimes even when they go, let's say for instance, they go and they mess up based on our recommendations. It's also very difficult for us, but we are blamed for it because at the end of the day, we just share the job and we give the opportunities, but we don't know who goes there. So some of the things we want to do is to put structures in place in terms of, okay, if we are sharing job opportunities or we are taking job opportunities and sharing it to people, we are sharing it to our members that we know have gone through us and we can vouch for them. And so we launched it with our website, which I'm going to enter, I'm going to leave here. And so, and so we have it in two categories. You have the student's membership and we have the professional's membership. And the professional membership um, is categorized in terms of our years of experience. We have the young star experience uh, members who are like recent graduates to five years. And then we have um, six years to 15 years and then we have the senior membership, which is from 16, 16 years and above. And these are like our, our, our senior, senior members in the industry. They have a lot of experiences 
And we've done so many. We have our annual flagship events, which is the summit. We get over 200 people. It's a free to attend event. So we really get people. We get a great number of people. But the way we scale it to paid events, there's always a problem, obviously. So, but aside that, we do industry versus classroom where we take the industry persons, so some of our women into the classroom to speak to them, to bridge the gap between the students and the professionals. Because sometimes you finish school and it's difficult to, to transition into the world, uh, the corporate space. So we, share, we take those women there to share their experiences, what they did after school, how they've been able to journey their way to the top. And it's been very helpful. Aside that, we have our PR conversations and cocktail, which is like an end of year event. And then we have PR in the park. We have so many other things that we do. And so the good news is that we want to run it as a membership now, a paid membership now, um, to be able to streamline our members, to be able to control and to offer, to offer more, more critical is, more, is offering value. And all these things is also based on um, our, our backup research data, where, where we want to support more women into leadership position. We have the global data that states that women, um, there are a lot of women in the, at the entry level, but then when it gets to the leadership, uh, the top, they, they fall off. And for some of us who are young, we know that we don't know what the challenges are. We may experience it at some point, but we always want to be there for our members to support each other and hold each other's hands and make sure that in very difficult times in terms of work-life balance, there's always another PR if you have a plan or you're supposed to go uh, put together a plan. And because of time, you can always reach out to your fellow colleague to help you out, to be able to balance all these things and push more women into leadership positions. So those are the exciting things we've been doing. And this year definitely looks, it looks very packed for us. We know COVID is still around, but we are trying as much as possible to, to give, uh, give more to our members. We are, I out, uh, outlined our, our program for the year during our Facebook Live on Thursday. And it's really packed. Um, so we look forward to a great year. And then we also look forward to collaborating more this year. There's always an opportunity to learn. There's never a time to stop learning until we die. So as long as we are alive and uh, we live, we, live, we are alive, sorry, um, there's still more to learn and still more to share. And we always look forward to that. I hope I've been able to summarize That's everything amazing. so much but i hope i've been able to summarize it so amazing can you share the link in in the chat and also judith if there are any links that people uh, i don't know if there's a website if there are any links you want to share in the chat you can please share it so that people can after the meeting just go and check and honestly i'm, I'm excited for you Faith, because everything that you said i can totally relate with it because you know you're funding this thing and you're like okay you know we need to make some very hard decisions. So I'm going to, I'm sure I'm going to engage with you after to, to see how, how that goes for you. But I'm, I'm really excited at everything that you're doing and wishing you all the best. Thank it's, you. Okay, so do we have any more questions before we wrap up where we're coming to the end of it? Let me see, anybody wants to share anything about the experience being a member of a professional body, whether in your country or regionally, or anything that you haven't asked? Um, I think I'll just say for Faith and Judith, if people want to follow up um, and have conversations with you, how can they get in touch or connect with you? Are you active on LinkedIn? Faith, I know Faith is active on LinkedIn. Yes, I'm on LinkedIn as Faith Senam Oklu. Um, aside that women in PR is also available, just send us a message. If there's any Ghanaian here, oops, what did I miss? Okay. So you're saying LinkedIn? I'm on LinkedIn as Faith Senam Oklu. Mm -hmm. And um, so for women in PR as well, women in PR Ghana, we are available on all the major yeah. social media pages. You can always send us a DM. Um, yeah, you know how we are interconnected now. You may be in Nigeria, but you may be offered a job in Ghana, right? So yeah, yeah. In Ghana, you may be offered a job in Nigeria. So there's always a learning opportunity for all of us. And even though we are in Ghana, sometimes it's great to know how the market is in Nigeria because you may never know. A few years down the line, you are you probably will be heading um, a, a role in Nigeria. And so if you don't understand some of these things, how are you able to apply it? 
And it's really important that we bridge that gap um, among us, even as Africans. So really exciting times ahead and we look forward to that. I totally agree. Like um, we, we had a webinar with one of our community members that has worked in about, I think 10 African countries. And it just happened because you just never know when these opportunities come and you have a community or, or an association that you can lean on or you've, you've made a network. So if I'm coming to Ghana, for example, I'm definitely going to call Faith. I'm like, okay, Faith, this has happened just because I've not met Faith yet, hoping to meet you this year, but yes. we've established that relationship and she's able to say, okay, I may not know the answer, but I know somebody that can help you out. And I think it's so important. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see Judith anymore, but I was going to ask if Chanda or Elena, if there's any website link that you know you want. Okay, sorry, I just saw that Elena has. Thank you so much, Elena. So if you, want... I'm back. I'm oh, back. Okay. I was asking for the link, um, which Elena has just kindly posted for us. Um, Judith, are you active on LinkedIn? If people want to connect with you personally, yes, I am. Okay, okay. So you can connect with Faith. You can connect with Judith. I'm just going to just wrap up because I know. I got a number of questions about the Comms Avenue, um, and I hope you can see the screen. And this is our website, www.commsavenue.com. And really, we're all about capacity building. We're all about networking. And we have members from across the continent. The group is domiciled on Telegram. And it's such a vibrant group where you come in, you ask questions, you, you find a friend. We're having a virtual community hangout tomorrow where you just get to meet somebody in a different location and just know how how is PR and communications done in this country? I remember speaking to one of our members in Tanzania and just learning how you know, their approach to comms and public relations is. And it was, I found it quite interesting. So it's, very, very, um, it's a very robust platform. And we also really want to tell the stories of communicators and PR professionals because we're the ones behind the scenes. So people see the great campaigns. People see the amazing work where you don't know the story and the, the hard work of the people that have run all of these campaigns and everything. So what we also do is that we have webinar series. So if you want to come on a webinar to just share on any topic or just even share your personal journey, your experience as a peer professional in your country, we have our mentoring program, which we're currently doing a call for mentors. Our only requirement is you have at least eight years experience. And we've run three batches and we've had mentors from Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, we've also had mentors from India, from the US, from the UK, and now we really want to expand, um, scale that. And we've also had mentees from about three or four African countries. So we want to just do more. So people on the call from Zambia, if you want to join in as either a mentor or a mentee, that opportunity is available. And these are some of the webinars that we've had, very robust conversations. Like sometimes I just I just go back at them, the lessons that we gain from just having these interactions. And finally, we have our blog where we spotlight um, PR communicators across Africa. They just tell us their stories and that's the calm spotlight. We, we learn, there's so much to learn, you know, and the recent one we just did Nelly, she transitioned from being a journalist to a development comms. And it was, it was just so interesting reading her story. And that's really what we do in a nutshell. This year, we're also planning to be able to travel across the different countries where we have members, just bring them together, let us talk, you know, have, have a chilled conversation um, and then share ideas and just get people connected because I really believe in the power of relationships. I have gotten here by the power of relationships. I have a book where I shared my journey and a lot of it is building relationships, nurturing relationships. And that's something that we kind of encourage. So to join, just... If you go on our website, there's a place there on the top that says join, and you're able to join as long as you're a communications professional. We're not yet at the at the membership stage, you know. That's something. I mean, the thoughts have come, like all the all the points that Faith raised, but they're very very valid. But for now, we're still very open for people to just come and access the community. But we do have paid events going forward, um, paid programs, just so that we can also add value because I think value is so important. So thank you everyone for joining. I don't, I don't see any questions or anything. And I hope that this has been beneficial for you. I hope that if you've been thinking about joining a body if you're in Ghana, if you're in Zambia, um, sorry, we couldn't get our rep from Zimbabwe. Um, I think we have one more of this webinar we're going to be discussing with members from the International Association of Business Communicators, that's IABC. 
and they're just going to come and just talk us through um, the different benefits and the members. And what I like about that one is that we're going to have some of their members just also come and share why, just as we did today, why did you join? What have you gained? How has it been like for you professionally? Because you don't just want to join a professional body just because you want to join because it's adding something to you. As we've learned from, from Zapra, there's a lot of benefits and Faith has shared about her experience with IPR Ghana and running women in PR Ghana as well. So thank you all so much. The replay of this will be available on our YouTube page. And if you need to contact us, let me put our email address here. I'm also... Um, Active on LinkedIn, I did doing JSME, so you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm going to put our email address. If you want to get in touch, just know more about our programs. You want to speak, you want to be featured, you want to mentor, just please get in touch with us. So thank you very, very much. Really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Chanda. We really, really, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. So bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Bye.